Hey guys, so today I watched Labyrinth of Lies. And like me, your first question is probably, what the fuck is that? I certainly hadn't heard this movie before today. I was actually going to watch Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse today because I thought, you know what? What's funner than reviewing a movie that's absolute dog shit? And then I mixed up theaters, so I was too late for a showing of that. And then I was like, well, I need to review something today. I need to find something. And so I found this movie, Labyrinth of Lies. And this is, there's three reasons why this is normally not a movie I would go see. For one, it's pretty dark. I usually like more lighthearted things, but I'm trying to, you know, expand on my basis for movies. Two, it's a foreign film. I don't watch a lot of those, even though I think I should. I don't know why I don't. I think it's just because it's never advertised and... Yeah. And three, it's based on a historical real-life event. And that really bugs me because usually when I watch these movies that are based on historical events, I always go back and research it and then find out that, okay, what actually happened was probably more interesting than the film. Which, it just, it's disappointing. But this film... I couldn't fucking verify anything. I don't know if this film is accurate or not. There is a critic online that I found who said, yes, it's accurate as far as I know. And those were pretty much his exact words. So keep in mind that during this review, what I say happened in the movie may or may not be what happened in real life. I couldn't verify it. So what is this film about? It's about what growing up in post-World War II slash post-Holocaust Germany was like. And that's a pretty dark topic, but it's also something that I always kind of wondered about. Like, when you're the child of this culture that was arguably the most evil culture ever, and you're dealing with people every day, you know, if someone's 45 years old and you're 18, they were probably alive and might have been a Nazi soldier. And you have to live with that. You have to find some way to say, okay, I live in this society, and that's okay. And I always just kind of wondered about that. Because, you know, if I was growing up and wondering, like, okay, how many of my family members were Nazis, I'd be a little bit jaded. Like, that's, you know, the Nazis, there were two things they really did for society. The Autobahn, which is basically the first freeway, or modern freeway, and they're the best villains for Indiana Jones to kill. Because I love watching Indiana Jones kill some people. I might watch that after this review because Nazis were bastards and I love Indiana Jones. I digress. But this film really is about, like, what is it like having to live in that culture? Having to wonder if the person you're dealing with right there in front of you, the guy giving your, your change back for buying a carton of cigarettes, might have shot some Jews down outside a concentration camp. That's a hard question. Our main character is Johann Radman, which is an awesome name, and it's way better than most German names, because I've seen some German names now because I watched this film, and they all sound horrible. But anyway, he's played by Alexander Felling, and right out of the gate, I'm just going to get this over with, the acting in this movie is great! This is, I mean... First of all, you have to recognize Hollywood puts out so many movies per year that, you know, they have to rely on second and third tier actors to be stars in movies. Whereas Germany and France, the movies that reach us from those places, you know, Britain even, like, they're usually giving us their best. And you can feel it in this movie. Everyone does a good job. Johann Krisch plays Simon Kirsch, which they just switched two letters in the last name. Yeah, that's cheap. But he does this great job. He plays one of the survivors of Auschwitz. And I loved his performance in this. It particularly shined to me. He does a great job. So what's the story? The story is Simon Kirsch, the guy who the actor played a great job. Bleh. Anyway, he is a survivor of Auschwitz. And in his just day-to-day -day life, he finds out he meets this guy who was a guard at Auschwitz who was a particularly vicious bastard. And so he goes to his friend, Thomas Nielka, who is a reporter, and says, and tells him about it. And Simon Kirsch doesn't want to relive this because you are reliving the worst part of your life if you go through this again. Which is why in this film, there's a lot of 
actual concentration camp survivors who are very reluctant to be a part of this story because you're going to have to relive the worst part of your life for this. And so a lot of them are portrayed as very hesitant, which I understand. But anyway, Thomas Nielka, this reporter, goes to, Al, to Johan Radman, who's a persecutor at the office. And he says, okay, you have to, this guy, this Nazi bastard who Simon Kirsch knew is a war criminal, is teaching children at an elementary school. That's illegal. Do something about it. And Johan Radman says, I got you, brah. And he does it. He files the appropriate paperwork. This guy... You know, man, he's going to be free, but at least he's not going to be working with kids. Well, no. Nobody does anything. This whole film is about this... A lot of this culture, based on what the film says, is just about forgetting what happened. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to think about the fact that their neighbors might have been Nazis. The fact that their fathers might have been Nazis. The fact that anyone close to you of a certain age might have been a Nazi. Because being a Nazi is the worst thing ever. That uh, Nazis were the best villains of all time. They're scarier than werewolves, vampires, and zombies combined. But they feel realistic because that actually fucking happened. So, thank you, Nazis. A public message. Don't listen to me ever. I'm an idiot. I review things online. I obviously don't have my shit together. Anyway, so... This film focuses in on that, and the main character, Johan Radman, the first act of this, he's really gung-ho. He's trying to get things done. Slowly, this case goes from trying to get this Nazi bastard to not be a teacher to building a case against hundreds of guards at Auschwitz who either killed people or witnessed violent deaths at the hands of these guards. And the film progresses at a very even pace for the most part. The second act is him just dealing with the fact that everyone around him over a certain age was somehow a part of this. They either witnessed these crimes and said nothing, or they were fucking Nazis. They were either people in submarines blowing ships up in the Atlantic, or they were soldiers, or they were guards at concentration camps. And he has to figure out how to emotionally deal with that as someone who was too young to really process it at the time. And there are times this movie gets really uncomfortable. It gets really emotional. And I, you know, there were a couple times where I was just like, holy shit, what's going to happen next? I didn't know. And it's it's a good movie. I thought it was going to end up being a courtroom drama, but it wasn't. You know, this film focuses more on what it was like to be part of that particular group of people during that time. I was originally going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. But based on what I said about the performances, I'm actually going to bump this up to an 8. This is a very good movie. If you like foreign films, if you like historical dramas, which you can't verify because Wikipedia doesn't have its shit together, then this is a good movie. It's intense. There's a lot of uncomfortable moments. And this answer is a big question I always kind of had, which was, what would it have been like growing up in that environment? I'm going 8 out of 10. What, the only reason I wouldn't give this higher is because... There are a couple of subplots that I feel slow the movie down. Not much, but, you know, there were a couple times where just one or two scenes I wanted to check the clock. They didn't add as much to the film as they could have, and so, yeah. And the main character, Johan Radman, he starts off the film just this really exuberant guy, like, I'm going to be a badass lawyer, and I'm going to always do the right thing, and somehow that's going to happen together. And then he kind of gets, you know, halfway through the movie, things go kind of downhill, but I still never felt like I really knew this character. So, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. Anyway, comment below about how I might not be wearing pants. You don't know. That's a terrible way to end a review about a movie about Auschwitz, huh? Yeah. Knew it as soon as I said it. I'm going to say goodbye before this gets awkward. So, yeah, bye.